Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the most high power, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. All praises to Ahia Bahashim Yashaya Warawak. Shalom family. This is Sabal Nabaya. This video won't be very long. Elder Ayil from One Nation One Power brought this information out the other night. And because it is so pertinent as it pertains to prophecy, I had to do a video on it. So thank you, Elder Ayil, for allowing the Holy Spirit to use you and bringing forth this information. Guys, we are going to show you the book of more prophesied in the Bible. And if you don't already know, we're talking about the book of Mormon, but we ain't calling it that. It is not their book. It's our book. And we taking it back. This doesn't have anything to do with the church of Latter-day Saints or whatever they call themselves. All right, guys, let's jump right into it. We're going to start in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10, just like always. It reads, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now we're going to go to Psalms verse chapter 119 we're going to read verse 4 5 and 6 thou has commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently oh that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes then shall i not be ashamed when i have respect unto all thy commandments now drop down to verse 40 behold i have longed after thy precepts quicken me in thy righteousness if you guys remember, we went into the word quicken during the last video that we did. Drop down to verse 48. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Now drop down to verse 55 and 56. I have remembered thy name, O Ahia, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Now drop down to verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Now drop down to verse 125 and 126. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee most high to work. For they have made void thy law. How many of y'all know that right now the wicked have worked to try and erase the laws of the Most High? Now read verse 127 and 128. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. This world tries to teach you to chase money, but we can't do that. We have to reverence these precepts above that money and hate every false way. I don't care how much you think it blesses you and your family while you're doing anything you can to chase that money. Don't compromise on this word. All right, guys. So how many of you know and understand that the scriptures are manifold? That means that the scriptures are oftentimes saying multiple things at once. And you won't always get all of the understanding the first time you read it. But through precepting, eventually, the Holy Spirit will reveal more truth to you. I love the way the Holy Spirit works. It's amazing that Elder Ayil would reveal this information right outside of Ezekiel 37, picking up right at the end of where my last video left off. 
let's go to Ezekiel 37 and we're going to read verse 15 and 16. The word of the Most High came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick. Oh, hold on one second. My light just went off. I don't want to be reading in the dark. Okay, I got the light back on again. Let's see. Let's start at verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. All right, so Elder Ayil went into a study of that word stick. And let me show you what he found. Okay, guys, so go in your Strong's, to your Strong's Concordance, and go into your Hebrew section, and you're going to go to 1692. That word is debak, primitive root. It says, one definition is to catch by pursuit. Then you have abide, fast, cleave. And then it says in parentheses, fast together, follow close, hard after, be joined together, keep fast, overtake, pursue hard, stick, take. So now with that understanding, <clears throat> let's read verse 16 again. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one to cling to and write upon it for Judah. And for the children of Israel, his companions, take another to cling to and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So when you read it that way, then it becomes clear that there would be a record for the southern kingdom and for the northern kingdom. And we now know that that northern kingdom record is the book of more. But we're not going to stop there. There's more. Let me show you what we get. Even when we look up the word stick in the English dictionary, it says to furnish. And then there's parentheses. A plant, a vine, etc. Then the parentheses close and it says with a stick or sticks in order to prop or support. Another definition is to fasten or attach to adhere. Now we're talking about the English. Let's look at another definition in the English. It says to hold, cleave or cling. Are you guys seeing where I'm going with this? They chose to put the word stick in there. And to me, that sounds a little bit misleading for the translators to do that. However, with enough education, with enough understanding and study of the word, you could still derive the true meaning, the Hebrew meaning of that word by reading stick. So it's not a mistranslation as much as it is just a slick way of writing something. Now, guys, we aren't going to stop there because there's more to bring out about this. I took you to the Strong's in the Hebrew 1692, but that isn't actually the word that was used in that verse in Ezekiel the word that was actually used there was in the Hebrew 6095 so now let's go and read 6095 it says asta a primitive root to fasten or make firm <laughs> so the word is asta to fasten or make firm. A star sounds to me like a staff. And when you look into the etymology of the word stick, 
what you find out is the word stick came from staff. And the fact that a different Hebrew word was used there does not change anything. Because look what the definition for 6095 is. To fasten or make firm. And then remember what our definition for the word stick was. Or one of the definitions in English. To fasten or adhere. To cling to. (laughs) How many of y'all know that you're supposed to stick to the scriptures? You're supposed to adhere to the scriptures. You're supposed to cleave to the scriptures. You're supposed to cling to the scriptures. You're supposed to cling to the precepts. You're supposed to stick to the precepts. That's why we went through all of those different precepts after Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. You know, we went into Psalms and we actually gave a lot more than we normally do. We went through a lot more precepts for Isaiah 28, 9 and 10 in Psalms than we normally do at the beginning of these lessons that we put together. So now with the understanding of what Ezekiel 15, 16 and 17 are really trying to say. Now let's get a precept on that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 13 and we're going to read verse 11. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Most High, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name, and for a praise, and for a glory, but they would not hear. So how does the Most High cause us to cleave unto Him? How do we get understanding? You see that, guys, it's all connected. We get it through the precepts. Psalms 119, verse 30. No, verse 31. Well, let's read 30 and 31. It reads, I have chosen the way of truth. (laughs) Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto the testimonies, O Most High. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Wow. This is how good the Holy Spirit is, y'all. The Rewak just gave that to me. I didn't have that written down. I didn't have that planned out. But she had me to turn right here to this verse that I had not previously read before this moment. And it's right there. And then when we look up that word that says stuck, guess what? It's the same word used for stick in Isaiah 37, not Isaiah, in Ezekiel 37, 15. Man, I pray that you guys are getting this. I pray that you guys are being edified. Shalom, y'all have a great day. All praises to Ahaya Bahashem Yeshaya Warawak Kadash. Love you forever. I will honor and respect you. 
I will pray to the Father to bless you. May he send the Holy Spirit to guide you. You a pleasure to behold and a beautiful soul. When he made you mama, he broke the mold. I apologize if I've ever hurt you. And if you hurt me in the past, I forgive you. When I try to speak, you always tell me that you was grown when you had me. Well, I need you to listen and hear me. Cause this the Holy Spirit speaking, it ain't me. I know you think you know, but you can't see. The truth I walk in ain't religious. From your viewpoint, it's callous and rigid. But you'll never feel liberty unless you listen. My wife and children won't eat no holiday barbecue. The feast day's wicked and the food too. I know you think I'm keeping them from family and friends. Good times having fun with all of our kids. But I'm showing them their heritage and spiritual things. Got them learning how to walk in the shoes of the king. We love celebrating all of the Most High's holy days. We follow scripture and celebrate the holy way. Mama, come over. Spend a few days with your own. See how love and the law reign supreme in this home. Love and the law reign supreme in this home. You my mama, I'll always love you. Forever I will honor and respect you. I will pray to the Father to bless you. May he send the Holy Spirit to guide you. You a pleasure to behold and a beautiful soul. When he made you mama, he broke the mold. I apologize if I've ever hurt you. And if you hurt me in the past, I forgive you. You are the reason I reverence these scriptures. You were the one who gave me to the Most High while I was still in your womb. And I thank you, Mama. I hope one day soon that you will sit down and listen to what I have been trying to share with you. I love you, Mama. I remember cold winter nights You and me reading stories in the firelight You were the first friend of my life When daddy made you cry it made me wanna fight I don't wanna picture life with no mama The very thought makes me wanna cry I love you Ma You my mama, I'll always love you Forever I will honor and respect you I will pray to the Father to bless you. May He send the Holy Spirit to guide you. You a pleasure to behold and a beautiful soul. When He made you, Mama, He broke the mold. I apologize if I've ever hurt you. And if you hurt me in the past, I forgive you.